So I want to discuss heat pumps, what they are, how they work and how much they cost to run. morning guys how are we all doing well say morning it's not morning it's afternoon now not long since I dragged myself out of bed to be fair but considering I put a rate shift in at work yesterday 12 hour shift I ended up putting in an end and I absolutely absolutely felt it this morning <clears throat> I did I'm not used to them long days but money's money at the end of the day Christmas is coming the goose is getting fat and all that bank balance is shrinking <laughs> so happens with kids in it so we've got to grab them out while we can um well anyway not a bad day to be fair really 12 and a half degrees here in the midlands looked a lot cooler when i looked out a window though mist everywhere um well yeah not a bad day at all got a few things what i need to get done today um water change i want to get some water tests done um i've got my second course of fluke me fluke treatment what I need to get done started that on Monday um, fish have been looking hell of a lot better since I did the PP treatment for Costia um, really perked up nowhere near as much flashing um, so yeah I did the first fluke treatment on Monday did a full dose of the flucosol um, what our dad supplied me when we went down to Adam Byers Skegness Pond Supplies <laughs> um, yeah, so I did first dose of that on Monday, um, half dose Tuesday, another half dose Wednesday. Um, and yeah, I want to do me second full dose today. Because uh, I did find Gil Fluke. So I'm going to get the, try and get them knocked on the head, do another, another dose. Um, and hopefully we can get shut to them blighters. But like I say, I've got, I've got to do a few water tests first, bloody zoom filter. Got to do a few water trip, a few water tests. Um, Cause I've done any for a while. Um, bit of a water change before I do another dose. And then I want to speak to you guys about me SO seat pump. So you guys probably remember about six or seven months ago, I reset my energy monitor so I could um, track how much electricity I've been using throughout the season with me being heated um, so I wanted to do a video on how much that had cost me throughout the season to keep it heated up to 24 up until the point where I started to lower it back down again which is where I'm at now so I want to run through that um, how much an ASO seat pump is going to cost to run um, generally and go from there really and then it can give you guys an idea who's thinking about buying an heater something saw this bleeding camera out you guys who are thinking about buying a heater what to expect um and then make your own minds up from there really especially with the way um electricity prices are at the minute and the way they're going so i'm going to get done what i need to get done guys um and then i'll be back with you right that's the water change done guys or should I say, just it's filling back up anyway. Um, shouldn't take too long, hopefully. Um, done my water tests. Everything seems okay with them. Zero ammonia, zero nitrite, nitrate at ten, um, pH seven point seven, KH of three, um, GH seven. Um, did that test anything else? No, I don't think so. So everything seems fine. Uh, 
pH, even though it's at three, my pH still seems pretty stable, so I'm not too concerned with it at this moment in time. Um, so yeah, what I want to do now, guys, is get into this SOC pump topic um, and discuss my findings um, with that with you guys. So as you guys know, this is my Thermatec SOC pump. It's nine kilowatt inverter model. Not be on at the minute because it's filling back up the pond. There's no flow going through it at the minute. So with that, let's get into what an SOC pump is, how they work, how much mine has cost me to run so far. And it should be quite interesting, hopefully. Step into my office. Um, I just want to quickly go through it. Um, what an air source heat pump is, um, how they work, how much they typically cost to run, bearing in mind it, the, how much it costs for you to run is going to vary massively. It's not one pond is the same, this is just for your average back garden pond. It'll just give you a rough idea um, as to what you can expect if you're thinking about buying one. So let's get into it guys. Right then guys, so an air source heat pump is an efficient way of transferring heat from the surrounding air and putting it back into your pond. But heat pumps themselves, they don't work like a typical heater or combustion appliance. So they don't technically generate heat. Um, the way they work is by transferring heat energy from the air, um, even in winter. Um, there's always free heat to be had um, to a certain extent. This heat that is pulled from the surrounding air is transferred over tubes, um, over refrigerant. Um, it's a kind of heat exchanger uh, known as an evap evaporator. Um, as the refrigerant is always cooler than the outside air, it warms the refrigerant up and it turns it, in, turns it from a liquid into a gas. Um, the gas that is produced then passes through a compressor which increases pressure um, and that also generates heat. So the hot gas that is produced passes into a heat exchanger which is surrounded by water or cool air which then warms it up. The warmer water is then circulated back to your pond and the process continues again until you set water temperature um, has been reached. Uh, once that's complete the refrigerant cools back down to a liquid and it's ready for the next cycle again. So now that we know how they work, let's look at how much they cost to run. Um, now this is going to vary, like I say, from pond to pond, but I'm basing this on my pond, which is around 2,000 gallon, foam lined, block built, insulated pipes, and mostly covered throughout winter time. Um, location is going to play a big factor too, um, depending on where you are in country. Um, I just want to mention that if you've landed on this video looking for information on air source heat pumps for your home, then this one ain't for you. <laughs> That's a completely different subject in itself. Comes with a whole lot of other variables. Um, I don't want to get into that. Personally, I don't think they're ready for this country yet. Um, but anyway, that's by the by. This is aimed at heating up ponds um, and swimming pools as well, if you like. So, how much do they cost to run? Or how much does mine cost to run? Well, this is going to vary based on your own energy tariffs and plans, obviously. Um, but for myself, my electricity is 32.07 pence per kilowatt hour as of 1st of October 2022. Now, I reset my energy monitor in May um, to monitor how much the SOC pump cost me to heat the pond at 24 degrees Celsius. Um, at this point, we're under the April price hikes, which saw my electricity jump from 19.97 to 27.39 pence per kilowatt hour. Um, as of this recording, it's been 185 days since the monitor was reset um, and 1,329 kilowatt hours have been consumed. Um, due to the price changes throughout the year and obvious different in ambient temperatures, it's been quite difficult to establish exactly how much it's cost um, on each energy tariff. 
but by working on kilowatt hour averages throughout the year it works out at about 7.2 kilowatt hours per day if we just take into account the days from when um, the monitor was reset up until the 1st of October it comes in at 143 days so we can work that out work the average cost for this period by going on the season average of 7.2 kilowatt hours per day based on the electricity price during that time of 27.39 pence we can work out that for that period it comes in at a cost of 282 pound if we move into the period where prices increase yet again on the 1st of October up until this recording which is the 11th of November the time period for that is 42 days and a kilowatt hour usage of 302.4 so we multiply the cost of 32.07 by 302.4 kilowatt hours and that gives us a cost of 96 pounds 98 pence for this period if we then add both of them costs together it gives us a total cost of 379 pound for the season to further break that down into an average daily cost we can divide the total by 185 days and this gives us an average cost of £2 per day for the season now obviously in the current climate everyone's going to have their own views on whether A it's not bad at all or B not worth it regardless it's all down to personal choice and what you are trying to achieve with your pond and fish now that I've actually taken the time to break it down um, myself I don't think it's too bad given when I think of the benefits it's given me for the pond such as temperature stability um, good constant growing temperatures to name a couple uh, it kind of extends the season for a few months now I have no doubt that if I was to make the decision to continue to heat throughout the winter then the costs of it would be astronomical especially with another planned energy hike in January so I think giving them a winter at a stable 8 celsius is going to be quite sensible um, not only will it benefit them to pull the body back from growing but it's going to give the colour pigments chance to regenerate in an ideal world the best system to have would be an air source heat pump for the summer and a gas central heating boiler for the winter I could do it if I really could be bothered <laughs> but it's a hell of a long gas run to the front of the house um, not only that but it would mean massively upgrading the size of my gas pipe on meter um, but also a lot of trench work involved which I don't have the energy for I don't have the time for or the care for <laughs> at this moment in time and also LPG is out of the question um, not really a smart move around holes in the ground um, or on a south facing garden <laughs> anyway I hope that's been interesting for you, um, giving you something to think about if you're, buy, if you're thinking about buying an air source heat pump. Um, only time's going to tell on the sustainability um, for the future uh, if energy continues the way it is. Uh, just remember that if you are thinking about buying one, then placement of the unit is going to be key to its efficiency. If you place it in a north facing position for example, then its efficiency will be greatly reduced. Right, so there you have it then guys, um, I hope that's helped a few people out um, I hope it's gives you a bit of an idea of um, what you can expect if you're thinking about buying an air source heat pump um, Like I said, this has just been my experience with it so far um, Not too bad, not overly good neither really um, You know, considering prices are electric Compared to when I first set it up, it, it was a hell of a lot cheaper to run, but it is what it is. Um, two pound a day, not bad, not great, but like I say, it is what it is. Um, you just have to make that choice yourself, depending on what you want to achieve with your pond. But until prices get to the point where it's absolutely ridiculous and I just can't afford to sustain it anymore, I'll continue to use it. So. Like I said, I hope that's helped someone. So this is just filling back up now. Looking happy as Larry. Nearly walked into the bloody post then.
Glass is ready for a clean. Yeah, so, I mean, really, that's it from me, guys. I just wanted to share with you um, my experiences with the Thermatech so far and what, what it's cost me to run so far since it was reset. So, yeah, with that, let me know your thoughts guys, if you're running one, let me know what your ones cost you to run or how much it's costing you to run um, at this moment in time. I'd be interested to hear everyone else's um, take on it and I'll catch you guys back next time. See you later.